Hey there, it's Lucas Stringer here. Now, the first time ever on my channel, I'm going to review this week's SmackDown. Now, this week's SmackDown was decent, and it was a better SmackDown, I think, to say the least. It wasn't horrible, it wasn't really awesome, but I thought it was a good SmackDown. And, uh, I'm going to tell you about everything that happened, and then later I'll just tell you my overall opinion on the show. Well, it started out with Vicky Guerrero, and she brought out our current WWE Champion, Randy Orton, and when he walked down the ramp... She tried to give him a hug, and then, of course, Randy Orton just shook her hand, then he walked inside the ring, and then he cut a promo, basically, talking about how um, he is the right champion, and how I proved that when I was going to cash in my Money in the Bank briefcase, that it was going to come out of nowhere. And he did get some good boos from the crowd. I think it was a good heel promo to start off his big Randy Orton heel turn. And then afterward, Daniel Bryan came out, and then trying to talk Orton out, and um, basically he was just describing about how different Orton is from him, like, just, he literally went out for a minute about going, he's pretty, which I thought was hilarious, he was basically making fun of Orton, I thought it was cool, and I think Daniel Bryan's actually going to be a good face of the company, I really think he should stay face of the company, even when John Cena comes back, which, of, of course, they're, he's, Randy Orton's claiming that he is the face of the company, but of course, the WWE Universe, their face is Daniel Bryan. So afterward, Orton, wait, it was Brian that later on just said, hey, I want a match for the WWE Championship right here tonight. And then Orton said, sorry that you're going to have to wait for Night of Champions. So they announced the main event for the for Night of Champions on SmackDown, nonetheless. Um, Randy Orton versus Daniel Bryan for the WWE Championship, which of course I predicted. And I definitely knew it was going to happen. And I think it will be a good match because they put on some very good matches again. If you guys don't remember their match on Raw, whoo, that was a great, great match back on June 24th. So really, really good match. And then Orton tried to hit uh, Daniel Bryan with an RKO. Then um, Bryan pushed him against the ropes and drop kicked Orton out of the ring. And then the crowd went crazy with the yes chance. And then Orton just backed off. And I thought that was a good opening segment to the show. I really did think it was a good start with the show. And of course, later on, Daniel Bryan was set up to be in a steel cage match to prove that he does deserve a WWE title shot, I believe. Um, that he would be in a steel cage match against Wade Barrett again. Okay. I, like, I think for two or three weeks in a row on SmackDown, they've had a match. It's going to get old very, very soon. Because they both are great wrestlers, and they have good chemistry. So, um, and they did a little twist on it, having been in a steel cage. So I thought that was pretty clever. Then afterward, um, there was Curtis Axel versus Cody Rhodes. And, uh, I thought this match was decent. It wasn't, it was a, not a very long match. It was your typical SmackDown match, which... If they actually made an actual pay-per-view match, I feel like it could be a very good match because both are very talented in the ring. They're very well skilled and they um, know what they're doing, and I feel like it'd be a good match. But for for the SmackDown match, it was just decent. It was just a typical SmackDown match. Then afterward, um, of course, Curtis Axel beat Cody Rhodes with a, that neckbreaker finisher. Any of the thirty of fin thirty finishers that Curtis Axel has been given. Then afterward, Paul Heyman cut a promo and basically was talking about how. He knew that CM Punk was not going to be beat Brock Lesnar because P P CM Punk is nothing without Paul Heyman. Which, of course, that's not what the WWE Universe thinks. That's clearly what I don't think because CM Punk still had a long title run before he was with Paul Heyman. He was he was held a title longer until he was with Paul Heyman. Like he won a Survivor Series and he teamed up with Paul Heyman for the first time at Night of Champions 2012. Then he lost at the Royal Rumble, so it was a little bit longer, but oh well, who cares. Afterward, uh, after the match, there, after that match, there was, um, I'm trying, uh, sorry, I'm reading my notes right here. Uh, yeah, right after that, it was, um, Dolph Ziggler versus Biggie Langston. Now, this, uh, this match was, was very quick, it wasn't too long, and then that AJ in the corner, and you knew she was gonna try and interfere and stuff like that. It was very typical, and Dolph Ziggler won with a zigzag, and your winner was Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> They really are not doing well with this Dolph Ziggler face turn. I feel like you guys can make a lot of money. Seriously, WWE, you can make a lot of money with him being a face, and you're not really using him that well. Put him up for, for a, maybe put him up for the world title. Maybe add a triple threat to Alberto vs. RVD, because we know what's going to happen. Maybe be a fatal four-way. I don't know. Just get Dolph Ziggler back in the world title picture, because he deserves it. Anyway, enough complaining. And then uh, afterward, it was... Uh, an, SummerSlam rematch between Christian and Alberto Del Rio. This match, of course, wasn't as good as their SummerSlam match because that match was awesome, in my opinion. 
but it was a decent match, and uh, and it later off went to uh, Alberto Del Rio winning again with the cross arm breaker. Then afterward, he cut a promo, and then Ricardo Rodriguez came out again, just like he did on Raw, and brought out RVD. And of course, Del Rio retreated right afterward. And um, I really do think it's just gonna be Del Rio versus RVD at Night of Champions. I feel like it could might be added with a triple threat or a fatal four way. I feel like that could happen just to bring in more superstars to the Night of Champions thing. But uh who knows? And I feel like they could have a good match, even though their matches on TV weren't that good, but for a pay per view, it could really work. And I'm I really wanna see it, especially because since I'm gonna be there and I'm gonna be at the pay per view live and and how R V D's from Michigan, the crowd's gonna go berserk and I really, really cannot wait for that. Then, uh, afterward, it was Mark Henry and the Big Show against 3MB, which basically, 3MB was screwed. <laughs> like, all the, whenever, like, whenever you hear 3MB come out, you're just like, okay, it's an automatic one for that, for that person. Great. And, of course, Mark Henry and Big Show squashed, and I mean squashed 3MB. And then afterward, and I feel like they're doing okay as baby faces. I feel like Big Show is definitely a better face. I really do not think that you really should have turned Mark Henry face unless he was going to retire soon, which he signed like a five-year contract, I believe. So basically this face turn is completely pointless because last time Mark Henry was a baby face, like back in 2010, he was, he was weak as hell. And if you guys keep doing that, if you guys do that in this face turn, I'm going to be pissed off. So um, if they still have him be a powerhouse and still can kick ass and still is the world's strongest man and do a bunch of, stu a bunch of awesome stuff, then I have not much of a problem. Then after that, um, Rollins and Reigns came up on the screen and on the Titan Tron and cut a promo. So I, I definitely think it's got to be the Shield, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns against Big Show Mark Henry for the tag team titles. It's, I know it's gonna happen. And after that match, I feel like, yeah, afterward, um, it was Darren Young versus uh Antonio Cesaro. So I feel like they're trying to pull over the primetime players as as turning face. I feel like it is happening, and so because the crowd was still going millions of dollars um, in the crowd, so I really do feel like they're going to be a face, and they're trying to really market Darren Young off, which I think is very, very good. He's a good wrestler, but if he had not come out of the closet, he wouldn't be getting that much TV time. I, don't, I At least I don't think so. They could have got a push right before he came out. I don't know. I don't really care. I've, I'm really still really happy for Darren Young that he, that he had the courage to to um, come out of the closet and admit that he was gay. And I'm not I'm the staff track of that because it's not really much to talk about. That's for a different video. And plus um just let Darren Young be himself. Good for, it was good for him. Then he ended up beating Antonio Star with his match with his mouth start not the match. His um his mouth started bleeding during the match. So I feel like if I think Antonio Star didn't uppercut that match, maybe that was why. Then right afterward um Jack Swagger did try to interfere then Titus O'Neil pull out his legs, and, and then uh, Darren Young hit his finisher when he carries you up, then knees you in the gut, and it was a decent SmackDown match, it wasn't too long, and they all celebrated with the millions of dollars, millions of dollars, and the crowd was joining, and I thought it was pretty cool. Then afterward, there was a backstage segment of um, Ryback signing an autograph, and then the guy asked who he was, then of course Ryback was upset because he's the big bully now, which is so stupid. And he's just like, oh, because my kid will love it. Then um, Ryback just ripped up the autograph. And that this whole Ryback bully gimmick is just stupid. Which I've heard that this whole bully gimmick is going to give Ryback a huge push. Which I don't mind him getting a push. Because I feel like he could be some good championship material. I know I I think this and a lot of people don't. I can understand. Uh, but he really should not be pushed as the bully gimmick. He should be pushed as the feed me more gimmick that was awesome he was definitely got a lot better reactions from the crowd and you should have kept him that way because the crowd loved him but well the scenic kids at least not the adults goldberg then afterward it was the main event the steel cage match daniel bryan versus wade barrett now i thought this was a good steel cage match i think it was a good main event for smackdown it was very good back and forth and both of them are very talented wrestlers and i think the match went off very well and Daniel Bryan then uh, hit his um, high knee finisher, which um, he used to beat John Cena at SummerSlam. So I think that's going to be his um, big finisher from now on, besides the yes lock, 
which I think is a good finisher. It's very devastating. It gets you right in the face and knocks you out cold. Andy Pinway, Bear 1, 2, 3, and Daniel Bryan won. The crowd was enthusiastic, and when he went out of the cage celebrating, Randy Orton just came in from out of nowhere and hit him with an RKO and held up the WWE title to close off SmackDown. Now, overall, the SmackDown was decent. Uh, I'm really glad that they're using more of a Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton rivalry between the two of them, because I really did feel like it was just going to be Daniel Bryan against the corporate and then just having Randy Orton just be there, um, basically just um, supporting um, like Vince McMahon and Stephanie McMahon and Triple H. I felt like Randy Orton was just going to be like the guy who never speaks and never gets on the microphone, which I was, I'm glad they did that on SmackDown. Maybe they won't do that on Raw, but good thing we'll get to see that big rivalry heat on SmackDown, hopefully. So overall, it was a decent SmackDown. I'm going to give it... Uh, I'm going to give it a C. Close to a C plus, but um, most of the stuff was just decent. It was just uh, a typical SmackDown, so I'm going to give it a C. That is my first ever SmackDown review. It was very sloppy, I know, but I'll try to do better next week. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'm Lucas Stringer. I'll see you guys later with probably my Raw review, or I could talk about a different topic that's going on. If you guys want me to talk about WWE news I found out, just leave me a comment down below and tell me. I'm Lucas Stringer. See you guys later.